point to be made here. You can go anterior to the kidney, and you can do posterior, go posterior to the kidney when you're getting to the aorta from the left side. And it just depends on what your needs are. So there are avascular planes, both anterior and posterior to the, to the left kidney to get to the aorta. Atrophic kidney is something you're going to come across a lot. It's actually, uh, it, it is an, an important thing. You, you know, we have many scans. People, will, you will see small kidneys. There's a lot of reasons to have small kidneys. The one that we usually care about is ischemia. And what you have to decide is, is the kidney worth saving, uh, both in, in uh, instances of renal insufficiency and in sort of aortic and in aortic reconstructions as it determines what your operative plan is. So you need to look at the kidney size. In general, if a kidney is less than seven centimeters, it's not salvageable. If it's between, if it's greater than 11, it's normal. And if it's between the two, well, then you might need some more information. Uh, a nuclear medicine scan or so-called LASIK scan can help you determine the differential function of each kidney. And, and that can be important for operative planning and making a decision as to whether, say, a renal artery needs a concomitant revascularization at the time of a aortic repair. Horseshoe kidney. Uh, very rare, but influences aortic operations. That's the same thing. And basically, because although dividing that middle isthmus of the kidney has been uh, described in order to get to the aorta, and is sort of a, a legal maneuver if it's not renal parenchyma, but rather a fibrous scar, in general, when you see that, you have to take a retroperitoneal approach to the kidney, so you're not going through the horseshoe kidney to get to the aorta. Variations in renal artery anatomy are exceedingly common. And so what you need to do when you're, when you're planning either an aortic uh, uh, operation, either for occlusive disease or for aneurysm disease, is look at the pattern of, uh, of double and accessory renal arteries. And then you have to make some judgment as to whether they are supplying a, uh, a significant amount of the parenchyma on either kidney because that tells, that tells you whether or not they can be sacrificed as part of, say, an EVAR or part of, you know, oversown joint aorta by femoral operation, something like that. So very, very important to consider. The venous drainage of the kidney is probably the most important anatomic aspect of, uh, of, of the kidneys. And really what's important, and I think this diagram will show it, if you look at the left, the left renal vein comes, you know, over, over the aorta, under the SMA, and if you look if you look, there are three main branches to the renal vein. There's a gonadal vein, comes inferior. There's an adrenal vein, sort of goes superior. And then posterior, there is a lumborenal vein or a lumbar vein that drains into the kidney. All of those are accessory drainage pathways to the kidney. So if you need to get to the pararenal aorta, you can ligate the renal vein, but you have to do it near the inferior vena cava is the teaching point. So you can ligate, you can divide the vein as long as you keep those three branches open to drain the kidney. The other option is, and I think probably the more commonly done option, if you need mobility of the renal vein to sort of get to the suprarenal and infrarenal aorta both, you can ligate those three branches because you really need to ligate those to be able to safely swing the renal vein north and south. But once you've made the call to ligate those, you have to make sure that's going to give you adequate exposure because now you no longer have the option of just ligating the main renal vein if you get into trouble. Retroaortic renal vein occurs in about 4 to 5 percent of patients. Obviously, this is sort of the classic, you know, reason to look at a CT scan before, before a, uh, an aortic operation uh, and very difficult to deal with if, in fact, you, you get into it b before uh, without recognizing it preoperatively. Circumaortic renal vein is even a little more difficult to deal with. Generally requires ligation of one or both of the, you know, sort of smaller circumaortic renal veins to deal with the, the pararenal aorta. But uh, fortunately, it's, it's quite rare. I'm going to skip through the exocrine function of the kidney. I think what you need to know about creatinine clearance, we really need to know about this really probably for two reasons. One, we need to know about the grading of chronic kidney disease to sort of uh, make judgments about establishment of hemodialysis access. So we, we do that obviously for stage five kidney disease, both on dialysis and not on dialysis. 
uh, patients are refer referred you know, at stage four as well, and sometimes at stage three for anticipatory access. So that's, that's one, one, you know, we need to know that for, for that reason. The other reason is because of the amount of endovascular, for endovascular procedures and angiography. So we have to have an idea of what the patient's kidney functions are. So it is, it is important to sort of understand uh, where, where uh, the patient is from chronic kidney disease. As you can see, really, you know, it's all medical treatment of this uh, up until stage, uh, up until stage five, you know, uh, um, on dialysis, where really, that's the only time we really become uh, involved, for the most part, from an interventional standpoint, except for chronic, except for renal insufficiency due to uh, renal artery stenosis. I'm going to skip through the, some of the endocrine functions here. I think the point to be made about uh, renal artery stenosis and looking at the medical management of it is, if a patient has renal artery stenosis, that's five minutes, renal artery stenosis, and they have worsening renal function. Before you start thinking about interventions and talking to the nephrologist about whether it's warranted or not, the things that need to be considered is whether they're on ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Because, because I would have gone through all this physiology about the efferent arterial, but you probably remember the effects of renin on the, uh, on the uh, and an therefore angiotensin on the efferent ar uh, arterial. But if you have, if you are blocking angiotensins, the effect on the uh, efferent arterial, you're now lacking the vasoconstriction at that level that was maintaining perfusion of the kidney, and you're going to see a decline in renal function if they're on those meds and they have significant renal artery stenosis. Renovascular hypertension um, uh, is a form of secondary hypertension, usually due to either atherosclerosis or sometimes FMD.